Hello, I'm Jamie and Commons, and all eyes are on me because I'm quite tall and stand out in crowds. I got a hundred million people in the world telling me what's wrong today. I feel they're all too busy talking and figuring out. It's what they're trying to sing If we lost sight of what it means to share the blame Can we make a change? I want to make a change You see, I got mine, I'll be fine Fuck your pride side of this economy It's got us feeling like we're free And all we need is a bleed up and a brother die in this world, all I need is a little space to dream And I can feel it coming any day Any day well, I can feel a That's fine, I'm so tired of all the lies that jeopardize this world of mine Can like anyone can be someone, but if you're young, I'm sorry son, you're gonna wait your place in line In this world, all I need is a little space to dream And I can feel it coming any day now, any day I can feel a change I can feel a change Change I can feel it coming here Any day now Any day now Any day now Sing along, bear. Goes like this. Any day now, any any day now. Any day now, any any day now. Yeah, yeah. Any day now, any any day now. Yeah. Any day now, any any day now. Coming my way. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful evening. Um, I was born in England, and when I was six, I moved to Chicago and uh, spent six or seven years growing up there, and then moved back to London again. and. Um, yeah, I kind of grew up there and went to university and all that kind of stuff. So I suppose I have a, a kind of one foot in both sides of the Atlantic um, in my personality and, and musically as well.
I mean, this, uh, this project at the moment is called The Fever Dreams, and it just comes from a love of 80s music uh, from, you know, Peter Gabriel, Steve Winwood, um, you know, the synth-driven kind of soul blues pop. And um, yeah, and I, I just always love that kind of music. And we started writing a few singles and a few songs, and they, you know, people at the label were like, this is actually really cool. And I was like, is it? Because no one else liked this music for the longest time. So I was like, oh, cool. So let's let's put this out. If this is this is going to be relevant nowadays. And um, yeah, so it's just kind of a it's kind of a love letter to that that kind of 80s style of music, um, but not being too referential and hopefully putting my own spin on it. But um, yeah, it's, it's just fun to change up genre sometimes. You know, the themes of the music to come are your classic heartbreak. Um, you know, misery in relationships, but hopefully with an optimistic tone, a kind of a kind of happy melancholy. We're aiming somewhere, somewhere around that the Cure Smiths kind of vibe. You know, where it's sad, but we're having a we're having a we're having a smile at the same time. Yeah, we just finished tour with uh, the wonderful Mr. Jacob Banks. It was an absolute pleasure. Um, the player and a gentleman, um, and it was just a fun tour because you know we're both. But quite big soul voices, um, both from England. Um, and yeah, it was just great watching a set every night, but it was a really good one-two punch, I think, for people coming to see the show, because it was, you know, we were doing a more kind of stripped back thing and he was doing a big sound thing. So it was, it was, uh, it was kind of a, a package tour, it felt like in a bit, you know, um, like if you like this, you'll probably like this kind of thing. Um, so that was wonderful. And then we hit South by Southwest up, which was absolutely incredible. I was a bit, a bit tentative about it. The last time we played was very, very hectic and I got food poisoning and it was a bit of a nightmare to be honest. But this time was absolutely joyous and you know, every show was wonderful and we played a, a big stage at the big stage on the main stage just before Ex Ambassadors. So um, I got to get up there with them again, which was fun and we, we played our you know, our song like Jungle and, and you know, it was fun to, to get to get back up with those guys and, and uh, play with them again. I got my first hat. My sister got it for me on my 18th birthday because I saw this Beck photo um, where he looked really cool. He had like this blonde hair and he had this fedora on. And it's not a fedora, it's more like a Stetson-y kind of thing. Um, I feel like it's a bad word, the fedora now, you know, <laughs> from all the internet memes. I uh, gotta call it Stetson. And um, yeah, I've just never really taken it off since really. I mean, it stops you having to do your hair as much. And um, I've slowly upgraded over the years, and uh, now I'm at this uh, this white one here, and I have a, a black one as well. Um, but that's it. Once you once you reach a level of of a great hat, you can't go back down to what you were wearing before. So it's a uh, you're always stepping your game up, the hat game up, um, which is why when I see someone with a really good hat, I have to go talk to them. It's you know find out where they got it. But I think I've, I'm pretty much peak hat now. Like, I don't think you're getting much better than this one in the black one. I mean. So um, if people want to uh, hit me up on Instagram and, and say otherwise they've got a better hat, then I'd love to hear. Hello, I'm Jamie and Commons, and you're tuned in to Ones to Watch.